archaeologists have discovered a vast tunnel under an ancient Egyptian temple. After this discovery, we found a couple of shafts, 250 wooden coffins and mummies in perfect condition of reservation. The ancient Egyptians left behind an incredible number of mysteries. The pyramids and how they were built demonstrate that the ancient Egyptians were architectural, engineering and artistic geniuses. The enigma of mummification demonstrates that they were the first anatomists and possessed exceptional understanding of the human anatomy for their period. Another mystery in the Egyptian museum is the model sailplane or model bird. Man dreamed of one day doing the ultimate journey, flying to the heavens. Early pioneers in China and Renaissance Europe created incredible flying machines. Flight, however, remained a faraway vision until the Wright brothers achieved it in 1903. Now new evidence threatens to change the history of how humans learnt to fly. What exactly is this evidence? For this, we must examine some of the hints concealed in plain sight across Egypt and its tombs. Explorers discovered a hoard of treasures in an ancient tomb in Egypt's oldest known pyramid 100 years ago. For decades, their findings were overlooked and forgotten in the Cairo Museum vaults. Among them was a miniature carving made out of wood. This 2,000-year-old model may appear modest at first look. However, the more the Saqqara bird is investigated, the more the enigma surrounding it. Perhaps it was only a plaything all along. It could have been a weather vane. Perhaps it's a scale model of something that was genuinely able to fly. We have no idea. This modest engraving, known as the Saqqara bird, was discovered in a large burial site near Egypt's earliest step pyramid. It is thought to hold the key to a fascinating mystery. The remarkable thing about the Saqqara bird is the level of aerodynamic perfection it possesses. The wing and fuselage shapes appear to be inspired by modern aircraft engineering. Could the ancient Egyptians truly have had aircraft technology over 2,000 years ago? Man has long admired birds and wished to soar himself, and we believe the Egyptians considered flights to be a godlike ability, and perhaps this was their ascension to godhood. One of the ways that they would accomplish this goal would be by taking to the air. In 1969, Dr. Khalil Messiah was the first person to recognize the difference between this model and the other birds. Legs were typically included on the ancient Egyptian bird models, but this particular model did not have any. However, this model's feathers were left unpainted in contrast to others. The model has a 7-inch wingspan and a vertical tail, rather than a horizontal tail as is common in ancient Egyptian bird models. Messiah's brother, a flight engineer, recreated it in balsa wood and launched it, and it flew. After that, Dr. Messiah was certain that the object in question was a model of an actual plane and not a bird. The model dated back to the 3rd century BC, during the period of rapid technological advancement that followed Alexander the Great's passing. This time period, known as the Hellenistic period, is credited with the inventions of gears, screws, pipes, control valves, Euclidean geometry, Archimedes and Ptolemy's astronomy. The hieroglyphs on the model airplane read, The Gift of Amon. Another piece of evidence suggesting that the model was something other than a model bird was the fact that ancient Egyptians believed Amon to be the god of wind and air. In addition to being found on the presumed model, the phrase, I want to fly, was also discovered written in three different papyrus scripts. Simon Sanderson is an aerodynamics expert who has been captivated by the Saqqara bird for a long time. He intended to employ cutting-edge scientific procedures to determine whether the ancient Egyptians created a model for a full-size flying machine. He completed the ultimate flying test using cutting-edge technologies created by the University of Liverpool in England. We're actually going to make a model of the Saqqara bird that's five times bigger than the original, Simon says. The original was really small. The Saqqara bird is unquestionably the first step toward understanding aerodynamics. We're flying the glider at a fixed speed while gradually increasing the angle of attack and monitoring the forces it generates. That way, we'll be able to learn more about its flight characteristics. The results were encouraging. Simon's research suggested that the Saqqara bird may have soared high over the Egyptian desert over 2,000 years ago. However, one potentially serious issue remained. Stability. A plane's tail is essential for keeping it level and flying straight when the wind is blowing 
or when you're trying to exert some sort of control over it in the air. When there is no way to slow or reverse your ascent after you've made a pitch, you'll continue rising constantly. Without a tailplane, it makes it very, very difficult for aircraft to fly. But what if the Saqqara bird had a tailplane at the time of the ancient Egyptians? A portion has broken away near the back of the carving, just where a tailplane may have been installed. The significant changes to the model were made by Simon and his engineers. With the addition of the tailplane, the Saqqara bird produced an entirely new set of aerodynamic data. The model took off as soon as Simon grasped the controls. The Saqqara bird soared through the skies with ease. Modern technology has proven beyond doubt that this mystery bird could have flown over 2,000 years after the ancient Egyptians carved it. There is no conclusive evidence that the Egyptians were the first to fly, however several questions arise as a result of this operational approach. Were the Egyptians the first pilots and did they design the first plane? Where is it if they did? However, there is another twist to the ancient Egyptians' mystery of flight. A stunning, some say chilling, discovery was unearthed in Egypt's Temple of Osiris, sparking debate in the scientific community. The walls of the temple are inscribed with almost 2,000-year-old hieroglyphics. These images, carved with astonishing accuracy into the old rock, reveal the mysteries of how generations of pharaohs lived and died. Dr. Ruth Hover, an Egyptologist, discovered an unexpected discovery while photographing one of the wall panels. A depiction of an aircraft with a sharply defined rudder surfaces at the bottom. A modern day helicopter is plainly recognisable at the top. To the right of this is a streamlined water vessel, with what appears to be a submarine beneath it. These simple photos have sparked a heated debate among Egyptologists and experts, challenging all we thought we understood about the ancient Egyptians. There is something unexplainable and mysterious in this place. Some of the theories say that people came from space to teach the ancient Egyptians. Especially, they say these shapes look like a helicopter. Could we, however, be projecting images from our own civilization onto these old symbols? However, there is more. Dr. Ruth Hover says she has deciphered an ancient code holding a message written 2,000 years ago, a message that the Egyptians intended to remain secret until our culture was ready to unravel it. Dr. Ruth claims that down in the corner of the famous picture, there are a series of symbols and the numbers are nine, they come out to nine, and nine is also the number of the planet Mars. Did we come from Mars or was Mars a stopping place? We're still uncovering the mysteries of Egypt. It's very exciting. However, these enigmatic symbols and artifacts are not unique to Egypt. For millennia, native South Americans have portrayed nature all across South America, from the arid plains of Peru to the jungle kingdoms of the Amazon. We learn about their culture through amazing murals, pottery and relics. A group of explorers discovered an unusual discovery deep in the Colombian rainforest in 1965. These lovely brooches were created almost a thousand years ago by an ancient culture known as the Kimbayan, out of gold and copper alloy. They look to be models of winged insects at first inspection. However, a closer examination reveals that these artifacts are exceedingly odd. Their design has oddities present in no other air-breathing species in nature. Normally you'll find it only with fishes, but no animal anywhere has vertical fins. They actually have wings, but of course not on the lower edge. All these models have on the low edge these wings. All birds have, of course, the wings on the upper sides. As scientists dug deeper, they discovered additional inexplicable mysteries in the model's architecture. While the wings of all insects are positioned on the top of their bodies, the wings on this antique brooch are located at the bottom, a trait observed only in modern jet aircraft. However, this is not all. The brooches, like the jets, have delta-shaped wings. There is a rudder that can be seen very clearly, as well as ailerons, which is very astounding. All of these characteristics may be found in current aircraft, such as the Space Shuttle. As a result, this golden model has left a fascinating enigma. Could this be a model of an actual aircraft? Did the ancient Kimbayans know how to fly 1,000 years before the first recorded flight? Our discovery of the mysteries of the ancient world have forever changed our understanding of how planes, trains and automobiles came to be. Do we give ourselves too much credit for pushing the limits of engineering? 
or are we simply rediscovering the ancients' work? If we've only scratched the surface of how the ancient world really worked, what fresh inventions lurk under the surface, poised to change history? Leonardo da Vinci was still working on flapping wing airplanes and corkscrew-driven helicopters, but here the Egyptians had created something that had all the characteristics of a modern plane. If in the future near or far, more artefacts are found to be proving that the ancient Egyptians did build a plane and did fly, history will be corrected and the Wright brothers would be the second to fly. What are your thoughts on the matter? Did our ancestors really have the ability to fly? Tell us in the comments section.